All right, as we continue talking about BGP, the next thing we need to talk about is the BGP best path. This is quite complex to a lot of people, so we're going to spend a bit of time trying to understand BGP best path. Now, the first thing to note about best path is what is not often considered part of the best path processing is the discarded routes. These are things that BGP simply does not consider. These are routes that are not considered within the BGP best path calculation. And remember, when I say BGP route, I mean an NLRI plus a set of attached attributes. So that is a route. The first of these is next top inaccessible. It makes no sense to consider a route without an accessible next top in the BGP best path because you would never install it in the local routing table. You can't forward to those types of routes. The second one is eBGP learned routes with the local AS in the path. These are by definition loops and you'd never want to accept a routing loop, a permanent routing loop in your network. Now it happens to be that a lot of implementation will allow you to accept your own AS. Um, and this is something that's often used in enterprise networks if you're using the same AS in multiple places or data center fabrics. But we're assuming that when you do accept on AS or if you take out this discard rule in BGP, in the BGP best path processing, that you have some other way to ensure that there is not a loop in the network. Another thing that can cause a route to be discarded before it even hits BGP best path is enforce first AS. In this case, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the first AS number in the AS path attribute, and I'm making certain that it matches the AS number of the peer from which I'm receiving the update or the MP reach TLV. The reason I do this is to prevent spoofing. There is absolutely no reason or very few reasons why an AS should be originating routes or transmitting routes with some other AS in its AS path or inserting some other AS in its AS path. There are some AS transition mechanisms and things like this that use this, but by and large providers should generally have this turned on when they are dealing with customer autonomous system connections. This is also useful in BGP in data center fabrics, even as an overlay, if you're running eBGP to allow a little bit more security and prevent systems that have been taken over by outsiders from originating false paths within the BGP overlay in a data center fabric. Now, another thing that's discarded immediately is paths excluded by local policy. While these paths are removed from the best path calculation, they are often kept and marked as receive only. So if you see something that is receive only, it generally means in most BGP implementations that the path has been received, but it is being excluded by local policy. Now let's look at the best path process just one step at a time. We won't look at everything in the best path process. We'll just look at a few of the things in the best path process because it's quite long and complicated. Let's begin with something that is actually not a BGP attribute, which is the weight. So the weight is kind of like an administrative distance within the BGP process on a local router. It's not carried anywhere in the attributes within a BGP MP reach or, in, or reach uh, TLV set. So it is not actually a part of the route itself. Let's say that A is advertising 100 colon colon size 64 to both B and C, and B and C are both advertising that same route to D. Well, the administrator, the operator of router D can set the weight such that the route through B wins over the route through C, regardless of anything else in the BGP update or within the MP reach or, M or reach TLV or the reachable destination or route or whatever you want to call it. So regardless of what's in the route, the operator at D can set the weight to prefer the route through B rather than C. Not all vendors implement weight, but some do. Now let's look at the second point, which is local preference. This is always the second thing in the BGP best path, and it's actually the first in the real best path because weight is generally considered to be outside of the best path. It's a local administrative policy. So let's say that A is advertising 100 colon colon slash 64 to B and to C. B is then advertising it to D, and C is then advertising it to E. At F, um, 
which route should be chosen. Well, the administrator of AS 65002 has ultimate control over what path traffic is going to take within the autonomous system, within their network, within their operational realm, about which path any traffic is going to take in order to reach this destination. In other words, to exit the autonomous system. This is called local pref. And it makes sense because it is the local preference for the destination. So anytime you look at local pref, you're looking at something that is the local preference of the local operator to exit the autonomous system. This is going to be the first thing that you check in your best path calculation. Now, the second thing that you check in your actual best path calculation is going to be the shortest AS path. So for instance, 100 colon colon star 64 is being advertised by A to B and to C. B is advertising it to D. C is advertising it to G which then advertises it to H, which advertises it to E. Now at D, my AS path is going to be 65,001. You don't insert the AS65002 on the path until advertising the route back out of the autonomous system. You may or not, may not remember this from an earlier session, but at D, the AS path is only going to be 65,001. At E, the AS path is going to be 65,001, 65,003. So the AS path is shorter at D than it is at E. So normally you would prefer the route from any place within 65,002 through D to B to A to 100 colon colon slash 64. There is a way to prepend AS path information onto a BGP um, route so that AS 65001 appears multiple times in the AS path. We'll talk about the reasons for doing this uh, later on, uh, but for the moment just note that it is possible to do this. The third thing that you can look at here is going to be the origin type. Now the origin type is not something that's often used as a delimiter or a decider or a tiebreaker between two different BGP paths, but it is out there and you will find it from time to time. So again, let's advertise 100 colon colon slash 64 from A to B and then to C. At C, we are redistributing 100 colon colon slash 64 into BGP, say from ISIS into BGP, and advertising that route to D. At B, we have a network statement that picks the 100 colon colon slash 64 route up from ISIS and pushes it into BGP for it to be advertised. At D, the route through B is going to say IGP. At D, the route from C is going to say incomplete. So in this case, the route from B would be chosen over the route from C because it has an IGP origin type. So IGP is always preferred over incomplete. Incomplete always occurs when you do a redistribution and a network statement always causes the IGP origin code. Now some implementations allow you to set the origin code using a route map so they don't necessarily mean anything other than just kind of a local preference for things by the advertiser. There is a third origin type, it's EGP, but EGP specifically refers to the exterior gateway protocol, which is the predecessor to BGP. It's very rarely used in the real world any longer. You will probably never see an EGP origin code in your life. It, it runs between the IGP and the incomplete, and it's used primarily as a way to transition from EGP to BGP. Now, another thing that you'll note is that you have the eBGP routes are learned over iBGP. So let's say again, I have A advertising 100 colon colon slash 64 to A and to C. C is advertising 100 colon colon slash 64 through eBGP to E that is then advertising it around through iBGP to D. Well, B and D are also eBGP peered. So D now has an eBGP route to 100 colon colon slash 64 and an iBGP route. D will always, in this case, select the eBGP route over the iBGP route. The next one that we run into is called the multi-exit discriminator. Now, this is often misunderstood what the MED actually does. What MED is supposed to be is the reflection of local preference. So local preference is at F in this network, what direction or what path would AS65002 like to use to reach 100 colon colon slash 64. The MED is AS65001's 
preference of how it would prefer AS6502 to reach 100 colon colon size 64. So AS6501 can set the med at B lower than the med on C and hopefully AS6502's operator will look at that med and choose to use the path through C. Now med is quite widely used and quite widely ignored. So we'll talk more about um, med and alternatives to med in a later session when we talk about uh, controlling BGP inbound and outbound traffic in deployment parts. Now another thing that you'll find is that the oldest eBGP path is preferred. So let's say that A is advertising 100 colon colon slash 64 to B and to C. B is advertising it to D and C is advertising it to D both via eBGP. Now let's say that the link between C and D flaps. So that forces the best path when this link flaps forces the best path to be B. Now when C to D comes back up, if there were med or something else that were causing the route through D to be preferred, what would happen is, is that D would still prefer the path through B rather than C because it's the oldest. What this does is this prevents link flaps from causing BGP updates for every link flap into 65002 and beyond. Now this is sometimes disabled for DC fabrics for data center fabrics as well. So we will talk about that when we get to data center fabrics and how to manage BGP as an underlay and an overlay in data center fabrics. There are a few final tiebreakers that we can talk about. The first is the lowest originator ID and then the shortest cluster length and then the lowest neighbor address. Now the originator ID is usually set to either the first eBGP speaker that takes the route in as an eBGP route, or it can be set to a route reflector's ID. Depending on what's going on, that can also be the cluster ID. Um, and then the shortest cluster length is effectively the AS path length, but it's the AS path length within the cluster list that is set up when you do route reflection. So this effectively has the same impact as the AS path length outside the AS, but this is within the AS. Now the lowest neighbor address is our final one. This is really just finally just a tiebreaker. If nothing else causes me to choose one route over the other, including the weight, the local preference, the origin code, the AS path length, or the oldest eBGP learned route, then I will choose the lowest neighbor address as my tiebreaker. You'll rarely ever actually see this come into effect because you'll almost always be caught in oldest eBGP route long before you get to the lowest neighbor address. So those are all the steps of the BGP best path algorithm or process. Now we'll talk about some issues in this best path and the way you get into wedgies and other things in a later session, but that's it for this particular section of BGP.